human flight. It's one of the most inspiring achievements of all time. You can't help but wonder what it must have been like for the Wright brothers on that famously glorious day they first achieved winged flight in 1903. But what about Icarus? To escape from King Minos of Crete, Daedalus built himself a set of feathered wings held together with strings and wax, and another junior-sized set for his son Icarus. Together the two flew towards safety, but Icarus flew too close to the sun. The wax melted and he fell to his death. Or so the story goes. The allegory served to deter most sane people from trying to fly for a few centuries, but nothing this great is achieved without risk. In the 9th century AD, inventor, poet and all-around polymath Abbas ibn Furness created a pair of feathered wings, much like those in the Icarus myth, and managed to actually glide, though severely injuring his back on landing. Some 200 years later, a young English boy who would later become a monk, Armour of Malmesbury, was also inspired by the tale of Icarus, presumably without paying attention to the ending, and attempted the very same thing. Tying wings to his hands and feet, Alma jumped off of a tower and glided more than 200 meters before breaking both legs never to walk again. Live and learn. Things went till dark age for a while after that, but eventually, a few hundred years later, Leonardo da Vinci drew up designs for a helical airscrew, a rudimentary form of a helicopter. The craft was never built and the designs show no mechanism for the vehicle to counter the spin of the linen screw. The design wasn't even published until the 19th century, right around the time Sir George Cayley of England published a few studies detailing his own glider experiments in 1853. Among his findings, Cayley concluded that the four main factors involved in flight are weight, drag, lift and thrust. Most importantly, he figured out that a curved surface on the wing can actually generate lift, rather than simply gliding around like most flat-surfaced wings did. Forty years later, Otto Lilienthal of Germany was gaining international fame as the Glider King, building on Cayley's curved wing concepts. But he just couldn't shake the notion that he ought to be flapping his wings like a bird. That preoccupation with flapping proved to be his downfall, literally. Lilienthal made his final flight in 1896 after a fatal spinal injury from his landing. But Otto's death was not in vain, as his work inspired a pair of adventurous young bicycle repairmen in Kitty Hawk, North Carolina, to build a flying machine of their own in 1903. Using curved wings to provide flight, and a custom-built motor with a propeller to provide thrust, Orville and Wilbur Wright pedaled their way off the ground and into the sky in the breakthrough moment we all know as the first controlled, powered and sustained, heavier-than-air human flight. But what made their invention so different from their predecessors was the ability to control the movement of the craft along three axes – pitch, roll and yaw. This approach to aircraft control is still in use in modern fixed-wing planes. Not to undermine balloons, rockets and space elevators, but when it comes to soaring with wings in the sky, a bird does not fly because it has an answer. It flies because it has a song.